somebody and say that you to be able to go unto God and to pray. This morning we don't have our normal prayer list, but we just want to pray for our church body, for our community, for all of those that are sick and shut in, and for all of those that are mourning. We want to pray for you this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning just saying thank you, God. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for thinking about us. Thank you for caring. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for talking to us, Lord. Thank you for giving us direction. Thank you for just continuously standing with us, Father God, in the midst of everything that's going on. Lord, we really love and appreciate you. We thank you for everything that you continue, Lord, to, to, to make work for us, Father God, in our favor. Thank you for all of the doors that are open. Thank you for all of the great things, Father God, that you're working on in our lives, Father. This morning, Father God, we know that there are some people, Lord, that are faced with sickness and illness, Father. Some people are battling things outside of COVID, Father. Some people have been battling sicknesses way before it even came, Lord. But God, we ask that you just help them through this morning, Father. Bless their bodies, Father God. Heal our nation, Father. Help us through these times, God. Oh, Father God, we just want to say thank you because we know that you can do all things. Father, we want to pray for all of those that are mourning the loss of loved ones this morning. Father God, give them strength to endure. Give them the power to continue to walk day after day, believing and trusting in you. Allow them to remind themselves to keep their mind focused on you. Because it is in you that they find perfect peace. Lord, we thank you. Because we know that you can do all things. Father God, bless the morning Son missionary Baptist Church, Father. To allow us to continue to go forth, Lord. And to tell people about your goodness. 
to tell people about your greatness, to tell people about who you are, Father, and the sacrifice that your son made on that cross for us. To let them know that this is not it. And if they receive you, Father, if they receive you, God, they can soon one day be with you and have eternal life. Give us strength to be the strong, standing Christians, Father, that we need to be in a world that is so wayworthy, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you right now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ain't it a good thing that we can come and pray and know that things will change? God is certainly good and I must continue to praise him at all times. Amen. He is good. I must praise him at all times. Forever praise shall be in my mouth. Amen. We are to our offering period right now. Everybody, as you know, uh, we have online giving via Zelle. And the church email address is listed on the post. And so continue to give your financial gifts. Continue to bless the church so that we can continue to build up like we need to. Y'all know we're in a building that's older. We got things that we got to take care of. So continue to give and do as you need to do. And as you've already said that you were going to do and instructed to do, thank you for your continuous giving and your offering. As we get ready for the sermon this morning, just go ahead and you can do your giving now. You can do your giving after the services. But we're getting ready for a word of God this morning. Amen. If you're ready for a word of God this morning, just simply type amen. Simply type amen in agreement with us this morning. God is certainly good. I'll be right with you in just one second. God bless you. Its lust. 
but the one who does the will of God lives forever. Amen. May God be a blessing to the hearers, doers, and readers of his holy word. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment, for this opportunity, Father God. Thank you for these electronic platforms, Lord, that allow us to be able to still deliver your message and your word, regardless of where we are, Father God. Lord, thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Crown my head with knowledge, with wisdom, and understanding. Hide me behind the cross, Father God, and I ask that you increase right now, Lord, as I decrease. Allow the Holy Spirit to unleash this morning, Father God, and touch us all. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. So me and my family, we decided to kind of spare of the moment. You know, we're tired of the same old scenery, the same day-to-day -day everything, and just working, working, working. So we decided, you know, let's go ahead and take some time and just enjoy each other. So we came back down to the old piney woods, as what we call it in East Texas. And yesterday I had the opportunity to just go out and go to the pool, which is located right by the lake. And I'm sitting at the pool, and my wife, my oldest son, Cameron, and Amari are all in the water. And they're just having a good time. I had got in the water and just to cool off. And then I went back and I got Zayden and let him just lay on me and sleep. And while I'm watching my family enjoy themselves and having a, a great time, I begin to look up into the clouds. And while I'm looking up in the clouds, I notice the beauty of all of the trees and the tree lines that's all around that area. And in that place, I found contentment. While I'm watching my family swim and there's a few others out there in the pool and everybody's having a joyous time, I was just sitting on the sideline admiring the beauty of God. See, there's something about the beauty that God has created around us that still amazes me. Something about it allowed me just to stop and take a moment to just breathe in and thank God for all of his great creations. See, everybody was running around having a good time. But my contentment came from just looking at the amazement of God. And the reason why I begin to get excited and I begin to smile and I begin to just feel this sense of contentment inside me was because I began to reflect on how God had truly worked in my life. See, the place that we're in, we came to about 10 years ago. And I remember when I came here, I barely could afford to get the gas to get to the place. I remember when I came here, my health wasn't all that great. I remember when I came here, I was aspiring to have a relationship with God. But as I sat here on yesterday, I began to think of how God has worked and pulled me in closer. I also began to understand perspective is necessary in the world that we live in. See, as I look at 1 John, I'm reminded of the purpose of his writing. See, he wrote to assure the church members of the certainty of their faith and to refute the claims of the false teachers. See, assurance ultimately comes from, uh, it comes through anointing that believers have received. That anointing that the believers have received is the internal testimony of the Holy Spirit. Uh, who brings assurance and knowledge of the truth. See, I've learned to be content in the simple things because I realize that my true gifts and my blessings, they come from the Lord. How many of you know that your gifts and your blessings come from the Lord on this morning? How many of you realize that we got to learn how to uh, appreciate God for the simple things? See, the experience is both good and bad that I've had. See, they've shaped my way of fellowship with God. Because I've struggled before, I can appreciate uh, just having a little bit to get by. Because I've been hungry before, I can appreciate just having a little sustenance. See, it's all about our perspective on life. 
John was dealing with a church whose faith was rattled. There was a lot of people uh, uh, that were going through something. They were hearing these false teachers spreading all this information. Some people were confused on who God was. Some people were confused on if they were serving the right person because these false teachers were coming in and they were shaking up the foundation. See, there are some people out there that are confused on today because things don't seem to be going right. But I'm here to encourage you this morning that if you only look at the perspective and if you look at your purpose and understand the promises of God, then you won't get caught up in the mix. See, John called these false teachers antichrist. They were there to deter the believers from trusting in God and they convinced them that there was a better way. Because the people, the Christian community, because they lacked the trust, they fell into apostasy. But here we have the text telling us. It goes back and it tells us what? It says, look, do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but it's from the world. Listen, this is the part that gets me. This is the part that gets me. It says, the world is passing away, and also its lust. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. And that's where we get our text from this morning. That's where we get this sermon from this morning. Because the first thing that we have to understand is perspective. We got to understand what we're looking at. We got to understand what we're going through. We got to understand and incorporate all of these feelings into one. Then we got to go back and we got to refocus on our purpose. But once we've done that, then we got to get to that last point. And that last point is we have to look for God's promises. And the reason why we have to understand God's promises is because this world is passing away. COVID-19 and everything going around right now should show you that the world can come and stop at any given time. We don't know when or what, what time God is coming. The world can stop everything that we know as being normal can change in the blink of an eye. So if the world is passing away, then the fellowship with God is necessary. So we can't get caught up in the mix of the world. Let's get into this text. Uh, when I'm talking about perspective, you got to look sometimes and just say, what do you see? When you look at the world, what do you see? When you think of the world, what do you see? For many of us, when we talk about the world, when we talk about life, we start thinking about the money, the cars, the clothes, and all the other stuff that we can grab and consider wealth. But we forget about the blessing itself, which is the land that we live in, which is the people that God has given us. That's family members, friends, preachers, pastors, church members to help build us and uplift us. Remember, God gave Adam somebody to live with simply because he realized man should not be alone. So we got to learn to start thanking God for his creations, our family, our loved ones, our church members, the people around us, and the very beauty of the land that we live in. See, God took the time to create all these beauties all throughout, but nowadays we spend more time wanting to play video games than we do to just take a walk and look at nature. And I ain't talking about this just happened since COVID came. This has been for the last 10 years at least. We've been so focused on trying to obtain finances, so focused on video games and things that keeps us complacent that we don't even go out there and see the wonders of the world. We don't even go out there and look and visit the places that they find that we look and read in the Bible. We don't even go and look at all the historical evidence that have been found to support the Bible. We would rather play a video game and pretend that we're somebody we never are going to be. These days, we got everybody who look at success as how much tangible things we have. See, I had a friend, and still is my friend to this day, 
but they came to me while we were talking and they simply said something uh, that, that, that they kind of rattled me a little bit. I'm not going to say it rattled me, but it surprised me. They were basically talking down about themselves. They were saying that they uh, uh, were upset. They were saying that they were tired of life. They were saying that they wasn't going to be nothing. I was like, listen, man, stop talking about yourself in that manner. Stop talking bad about yourself. There's enough, enough people in the world that's already talking bad about you. You don't need to talk bad about yourself. I said, brother, you got to learn how to uplift yourself. You got to learn how to continue to walk forward. And this is what got me. This is what got me. He simply looked at me and he said, man, everybody ain't successful and got it going on like you do. I started to smile, y'all. Almost to the point where I laughed. I wasn't smiling and laughing as I was gloating because I was successful or had it going on. But I was smiling simply because I didn't look like what I was going through. I didn't look like what I had been through. See, people don't understand. They look at you and they assume that everything in life is going good because you learn how to wear a smile on your face. Because you have joy in your heart. Because you get up and you say, you know what? I'm going to dress good today and I'm going to walk with my head up in spite of. They think that life is easy for you. But let me tell you something. The part that they're missing and the part that my friend was missing, it was not that I was successful or had it going on, but I had God in my life. It was the fellowship with God that allowed me to smile even then while I was going through a hard time. While I was going through some problems and some heartaches, I was still able to smile. And I just told him, brother, you're looking at success thinking about the tangible things. You look at me and think, oh, he's got it going on because, oh, I bought this or I purchased this or I got a job is doing this. Let me explain something to you. Success is measured how you look at it. It's all about your perspective. You're successful if you're saying you're successful. But the true success is having that relationship with God. If you don't have a relationship with God, you can have everything in the world. You can have everything in the world and no relationship with God and you still won't be successful. Because you still fail. Say, so what does it profit a man to have everything and lose God? How can you have everything and lose God? You don't have it. It won't get you anywhere. That's what it's telling you. When you're so focused on the spoils of the world, when you're so stuck on what the world is giving and what you've got in this world, when your perspective is you're not successful or you're not doing anything because you don't have anything tangible, then you're missing the whole point. What you need to have is the fellowship with God or otherwise you get caught up in the mix. When I'm looking at this text, I understand something. What it's telling us is we can't fall for the ways of the world and fall in love with the spoils of the world because if we do, then we get stuck. We're just thinking life means only what we have, tangibly. But if you know like I know, and if you've been through some things like I've been through some things, then you know that what you have today could be gone on tomorrow. It ain't promised. The only thing that is promised is what God has promised. The only thing that is real is God. The only thing that is absolute, my mama said this and I see where it took her. And the only thing that's absolute is God. That's what we're talking about, perspective. We got to stop looking at our lives as failures and looking at our lives as not being uh, uh, something that we've made into greatness simply because we don't have enough of something. We don't have enough money. Our education is not the best. We don't have a lot of friends. You got God. And if you got God, then you're successful. The closer your relationship is, the more your relationship is with God, the more you begin to understand that your life is more blessed than you ever could have been with all the money in the world. But when you get into the focus of understanding perspective, then you can regain that focus of your purpose. See, John was known as the apostle of love. But before John became the apostle of love, he was known as the son of thunder because he wanted to call down fire on unresponsive villages. Throughout his walk with Christ, though, and throughout living, he began to realize that power, uh, 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 that feeling, didn't come from having anger.
anger for people not doing, but compassion and love was the true power. Compassion and love was, uh, uh, it was giving, it was feeling, it gave everything. It was power in compassion and love because of God's love. We have a savior. But let's look at this here. When we put our lives in perspective, y'all, we can focus on our purpose. See, the Christian community, they had a purpose, but they allowed their focus to become distorted because the world had something new to offer. See, I've seen some people that while growing up, uh, they would change with the wind. Whatever trend would come in, they began to follow those trends. I told them that they were the kind of people that would sell their soul for a cheeseburger. See, some people in the Christian community are the same way. The church was supposed to be teaching, loving, giving, and lifting one another up in Christ, but they were deterred by false teachers. See, these teachers from the descriptions of their beliefs in this letter appear to be an early form of Gnosticism. Although the religious system itself didn't fully develop until the second century, its general features were evident here, and we see it in 1 John, we see it in 2 Peter and Jude. See that word gnosis, it means knowledge. And Gnostics, they believed that they were not saved, they believed that they were saved, but not by faith. They believed that they were saved by some kind of special knowledge that was available only to them if they join in this cult. See, there's a lot of people right now that are saying that they have the knowledge. There's a lot of people out there right now that are saying that they got a, a, a mindset and they better than others. They say that they're woke. They say that they're in a position where they know more than others and they're acting as if their knowledge is what's going to save them. But I'm here to tell you this morning that it's not knowledge that's going to save you. It's your faith that's going to save you. Somebody ought to be shouting and excited this morning because somebody's saying, well, I don't know as much as they seem to know, but it ain't knowing that all you got to know is Jesus Christ has lived, died, and woke up for you again because he was raised by God. If you understand that, then you have the knowledge you need to have to be saved. See, these Gnostics came and they made it pretty for them. They were a, a synchristic type of group, meaning that they had formed this religious uh, belief based off of other religions. They had a little Judaism, a little Christianity, and some other pagan uh, religions as well. This made it appealing to people. See, when something new comes, in order for people to be attracted to it, it's usually got to have a piece of something else. See, it had a piece of Christianity, so when they came and they began to talk to these people, and they began to tell them, look, you ain't no saved by faith, you saved by this knowledge, but you got to join us. Some of them were swayed away, and they began to go. They forgot their purpose because they had lost perspective. See, if they had thought about this and put it in perspective, they would have said, now why is it that I'm going to follow you when you're coming over here telling me something that I know to be false? See, if they had perspective, they would say that I serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they would know that this is the same God who has a track record of conquering all things. They would have known that they had a savior in Jesus Christ. They wouldn't allow themselves to be swayed. But see, sometimes when we start looking at things in different perspectives, new things seem more appealing to us. But let me tell you something. The old God is still just as good as new because he's still performing new mercies and new graces every day. New miracles every day. So the old God ought to be the same good God in your life. Don't be going out chasing these different religions and losing your relationship with Christ because you're caught up in the mix of the world. See, when I'm looking at this, I realize that there's a lot of things in the world that's going to be made appealing to you. It's going to seem like the right thing for you to do. It's going to seem like you need to be a part of this. But we've used too much of our lifetime straddling the fence. See, we all say that life is short, but yet we spend so much time playing with God. We spend so much time straddling the fence, so much time going back and forth. But I'm here this morning to tell you that you got to learn how to keep your mind focused on God so that you can understand your purpose. You won't get your purpose by going and finding a job. You won't find your purpose by sitting in your house trying to build a craft. 
But what you'll find your purpose is, is when you have that fellowship with God and he begins to reveal it for you. The reason why you keep walking around in circles and spinning, trying to figure out what to do, is because the one thing that you should have done from the beginning, which is fellowship with God, you fail to do so. And that's where we begin to fail as a Christian community. So many families are broken down right now because they don't understand the love of God, because they lack the fellowship with God. If fellowship with God is not at the head of your list, then you're failing yourself. I know some people are going to say, well, my wife is at the head of my list. Oh, my husband at the head of my list. My children come first. All of that will fail if you don't have God in your life. Because God is love. Can't nobody teach you how to love. Can't nobody show you what love is but God. The reason why some of you are sitting up right now with so much hate in your heart is because you haven't realized that God forgives you. So you ought to forgive others. That lack of your relationship with God is causing you to have so much hate in you that you can't build relationships with people. So you always feel alone. The very thing God put here for each other, which are people, which is the land, which are all the animals and everything else, you can't appreciate it. Because in your heart, it's so messed up, you've lost perspective. And because you've lost perspective, you've lost your purpose. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you can regain all of it. But you got to learn how to turn back to God. This morning, you got to turn to God. Because if you fail to turn to God, then you'll find yourself just like these people that John is describing here that left. The people who he said, they were never with us. Because if they were with us, then they never would have left and went out with them. He was talking about those church members who left and went to go follow these Gnostics. Because he said, listen, they've gone so far now that they're in apostasy. And if you get to a point of apostasy, there is no coming back. There's no turning around. Because you're too far gone, you have neglected and left God. I don't want anybody to neglect and leave God this morning. Because I want you to receive God's promise. I want you to get to a point where God is uh, uh, your normal day-to-day -day conversation. Where God is a part of your life so much that it feels weird for you not to go to church. Where God is a part of your life so much that it feels odd for you not to pray. Where God is a part of your life so much when you see somebody hurt and feel odd not to help. We got to get to that point in our life and not get caught up in the mix of the world. Because let me tell you something about the world. The world, it says, is passing away. And if you ask me every day, it gets worse and worse. Every day there's more issues. There's more sickness. There's more problems. I came down here and I looked and they're talking about a coin shortage. Everything that we once thought was uh, plentiful is starting to depreciate. It's starting to, uh, uh, to go away. It's starting to fade away. Because the world is passing away day by day. But God is still the same. So if you don't have God in your life, now is the time. Because with God, see, there is this thing that we talk about is God's promises. See, I heard me say that John was known as the apostle of love and also the son of thunder. But when I think about it all, John here is given tough love. He's telling them, listen, I love you and I didn't write you because I felt like you were strong enough to deal with this on your own. But I'm writing you now because I realize that some of these people are going away and your faith is a little rattled. Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church and everybody watching, I realized that with all this COVID stuff going on, I thought that we were all strong enough to deal with it. But I realized that some of our faith is rattled. Well, let me tell you this morning that if you just take your time and focus on the perspective, yes, COVID came, but yet you're still alive. COVID may have took some family members, but yet he still has provided you with the comfort and care. COVID may have come through and it may have taken and changed your whole world around, but yet you're still eating, yet you're still living, yet you're still working, yet he's still working on you. Yeah, you may have lost your job, but unemployment and everything else has came in. Yeah, things don't seem right. You can't have all the fun you wanted to, but yet God is still working in your life. I just need you to stop looking at what was and what is and focus on what God is continuously doing in your life. The perspective of God, the perspective of life. See, without God, life is nothing. 
But with God, life can be everything. And that's what we got to start looking at so that we can understand that purpose. And then these promises. See, these promises come because God so loved the world. See, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That word everlasting means that it's going to keep on going. We say eternal life. And if you look at this text, it says, listen, the world is going to fade away. The world is going to fade away. But the people with the will of God is going to live forever. So the question is, are you going to live in the will of God this morning? Are you going to learn how to walk with him? Are you going to build a relationship with him? That's the only way that you'll be able to have a life that continues everlasting. See, John did something unique in this text. Is he gave us an understanding and a way to test our fellowship with Christ. See, he said the way that we test our fellowship with God is that you have to look at your love for fellow believers. That was the first test. See, some of us can't even get past that one because we hear people sick and we don't call out to them. We know people are struggling. They've been out of work and everything else. We ain't calling and asking if they need a loaf of bread. That's where we fail as a church community. As a church community, we got to learn how to help one another. That is our focus. That is our purpose. Our purpose is to help, to build up, to uplift, to bring people to Christ so that they can learn of his goodness as well. But we fail as a church community because we're so focused on us getting everything we need. But see, after that, John has another test for the fellowship. And he says, this is what you do. He says, first thing first, love fellow believers. You got to maintain it. But then he says, you got to look at your obedience to God's commands. The way that these people failed was because they didn't maintain and follow God's commands. God says not to love another God. God says not to idolize anybody. Yet they were idolizing these people saying, oh, they seem knowledgeable. Let me follow them. Why are you following somebody who is talking bad about believing in Jesus Christ? Who's saying that you ain't got to be saved by faith, you're saved by knowledge. That's where John began to show some tough love, telling them, listen, if you don't get this right, you're not going to make it. You're going to fall just like them into the pits of hell. He called them people, he said that they are the Antichrist. He said that they are the sons of Satan. See, that's what you got to understand. Don't fall victim for the world and get caught up in the mix. That third way that he said that you can test is that your belief in Jesus Christ as the son of of God. You got to check yourself this morning and test your fellowship with God by asking yourself them three questions. Do you have love for other believers? Uh, or do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And are you being obedient to God's commands? You need to check your fellowship with Christ this morning. Otherwise, if your fellowship ain't right, I can tell you right now that you caught up in the mix. Uh, I don't want you to live your life being stuck and caught up in the mix because there's something that you can do to change this. We got to change our perspective so that we can realize our purpose and see that God has some wonderful things in place in your life. See, some of you will be revealed, uh, some of these things will be revealed on earth, but some of them will be revealed in heaven. But don't fall a victim to this world by forgetting about God that you serve to obtain some things that don't last. What I'm trying to tell y'all this morning is simple. Don't find yourself on the outside looking in because you've been caught up in the mix. See, sometimes the mix looks familiar to you because the mix is your family members. The mix is your church members that ain't seeming to be just right with God. See, sometimes it looks familiar to us, so we begin to flock to it. We begin to run to it. But let me explain something to you. You better check yourself and make sure that you ain't getting caught up in the mix and that you're in the relationship with Christ, that you're in fellowship with Christ. See, God has been so good to us, but just as good as he's been to us, he can punish us when we don't do right. He can punish us when we fail to acknowledge him. He can punish us when we walk away from him. So I am encouraging you. I am simply warning. I am simply trying to let you know this morning is the morning that you got to learn to love God for who God is. Find your fellowship in God so that you can be able to understand your purpose. But the only way you understand all of that is first of all by perspective. Who is God in your life? What does God mean to you? Have you sat down and thought about all the things that God has done for you that he didn't have to do? 
See, somebody ought to be shouting right now because God woke you up this morning. Somebody ought to be excited right now because God gave you breath. Somebody ought to be even more excited because you were able to get up and be able to walk this morning. You were able to move your limbs. You were able to say amen. You were able to hear a word. You were able to receive a word. You were able to relieve yourself of all of your problems because you were able to go to God in prayer. Somebody ought to be excited this morning because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son who went up on the cross and died for you. And he went up on that cross and suffered just for you. And all of that so he can be put in a bar or tomb and for his father to wake him up and raise him up only so that you can be able to have eternal life because all power was in his hands. That's putting things in perspective. Knowing that God is the creator of all things. Knowing that what God has done you don't even deserve it. But yet you still have it. But we find ourselves every day complaining about what we don't have. Complaining about what don't seem to be going right. We caught up in the mix, y'all. We've fallen in love with the world so much that when the world began to change and mess up that we forgot that God was the one who blessed us with it in the first place. It's time for you to change your mind. It's time for us to start getting that relationship with God, having that fellowship with God, understanding that if we can only appreciate God for what we consider the simple things, which are really not simple. Have you ever thought about how you breathe? That does, that's not simple. To walk, that means all of this is going on in chemistry and bionics and uh, biology and all of this neural stuff is going on. It's not simple. We take things for granted and call them simple things. But we look at money and call it complex. It makes no sense. If we've been caught up in the mix so long, that we appreciate everything that is not of God. We appreciate things that is not from God. And we fail to admire all the things that God has done and created. This morning I encourage you simply to turn your life back to God. And test yourself to see if you are in true fellowship. Because some of us have been playing church for a while. But we've missed out on who God is and what God is. God bless you. Thank you for joining me this morning. If you are in a position right now where you don't know if you're going to ever be able to get to heaven because based on where you are, it just doesn't seem right. Simply repeat after me. God, I love you. I've heard the word this morning and I want to receive you. I believe Jesus Christ came and lives on this earth he died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, and that you raised him up with all power in his hand so that I can have eternal life. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Save me, God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. I love you. I'm praying for you. Continue to pray for me. I'll see you next Sunday and we'll be live at the storm. Back at home, where we can see our pool here and everything in normal, in normal form. Thank you. God bless y'all. Y'all have a happy Sunday.